seminar had uh, heard a talk by Wai Li uh, three years ago now. She started on this topic, uh, so I think this would be an update and new results on the sparse consultant, which is actually uh, quite an important thing because it's going to show you, in a way, like the usual result, uh, which says that uh, two polynomials have a common root given the result. Uh, so this would be the analog for differential equations. I don't think this is for linear, this is for arbitrary uh, differential equations, including partials, okay, and multivariables too. So this is a, a very difficult and uh, technical topic, I think. So, uh, welcome, uh, Sean. Well, it's really for me a pleasure to give a talk here at the coaching seminar. And I would like to start today giving a brief history of uh, the, the problem I'm going to study to, to set up the context. Um, so you probably know that Macaulay defined uh, a resultant for multivariate polynomials, uh, uh, 1916, so uh, like 100 years ago. And well, his definition uh, was based on the definition of a coefficient matrix from the set of given polynomials uh, from actually an extended set of that one multiplied by monomials and it was the GCD of the maximal of the determinants of the maximal minors of this submatrix uh, matrices of this submatrices uh, sub of this matrix and then he proved that uh, this polynomial had uh, this had very nice properties including that uh, it was conditioned for uh, the polynomials to have common solutions. Um, but he treated the case of, he started with the case of non-sparse polynomials. Then uh, his definition was through a computation and it was um, later on by with Sturmfels and Gelb and Kapranov and Selavinsky that they gave a definition of what a resultant of a set of multivariate polynomials and sparse was that didn't depend on the computation. So it was defined as the unique polynomial that vanishes when evaluated on the coefficients of a given system uh, if and only if the system had common solutions. Um, and Later on, formulas were found to compute that uh, resultant. Um, uh, it was Kani and Emiris and Carlos de Andrea that they gave formulas of the Macaulay style to compute the sparse multivariate resultant. This is for algebraic polynomials, but let's look at differential polynomials. It was Josefa Caraferro, the first one that tried to give a definition of a, a differential resultant for multivariate differential polynomials. Uh, there were previous definitions for differential resultants, but for differential operators, given by, well, already Reed gave a notion of differential resultant and their hobby. Tissurunik and uh, Mark Chardin, they studied resultants, differential resultants or ordinary differential operators as an immediate generalization or, or reproduction of the uh, Sylvester algebraic resultant for two polynomials. So the one of Caraferro is basically starting with a set of differential polynomials, considering an extension of those through derivative of those, and then using Macaulay resultant to give a formula that is what she defines as the multivariate differential resultant. Um, it was very natural to do it like that at the time, but uh, her definition very often uh, <coughs> gives something that is, a poly that is zero, so it gives no, um, no information. And the reason is that in the differential case, even for very simpler, simple cases, we encounter sparsity. And she was not taking sparsity into consideration at the time. So um, when I started to look at this problem, 
with Rafael Sendra um, around, well, this is where we published first, but we started much earlier to look at these things. Um, uh, this is the first, well, we, we tried to, um, in fact, let me tell you, in the black hole. We started looking at a paper by Xiao Xingao, which is not about resultants, but uh, this paper uh, from 2003 yeah. is about indicitization of differential rational parametric equations. So we, we were looking at it and, and we thought about it as, a, um, as an inspirational or a first attempt to uh, generalized the differential case results about univariate varieties in the algebraic case. And then uh, it motivated us to uh, try to bring this forward and use uh, some kind of resultant to, to resemble the results we have in the algebraic case using the algebraic result. But of course, uh, uh, when looking at it, we realized that uh, it was not ready to start. <laughs> Because, um, okay, so if we are given a set of differential rational parametric equations, so this is something like this. up to x and r differential indeterminates over a given differential field. And uh, q1 up to qn are differential polynomials in a set of differential indeterminates u, let's say this n minus 1 differential indeterminates. So, uh, Gao was defined the implicit ideal which is the set of all polynomials, differential polynomials in the variables x, such that they vanish when evaluated in this um, differential rational parametric equations. Um, he proved also that this can be, uh, um, this is equal to the saturated ideal of a certain um, set of differential polynomials intersected with this differential domain. And this set P is actually um, the QIs XI minus PI. Very natural. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking at this, we said what is what do we define as the implicit equation? Well, if the idea has co-dimension one, then, oops, then this ideal is the saturated ideal of just one polynomial, differential polynomial, and this is what we call the implicit equation of the original system. Okay, so we had the definition and we wanted to compute this using result and so we began to look at what was available and we saw the results in... So this is the inverse problem of you know the solution, you want to find the equation. Yes. Basically. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like in the algebraic case, you have a parametrization of a curve and you want the um, defining polynomial of... Um, right, so the, yeah, the question was, was, do we have a concept of differential resultant that we can use to compute this, beginning from that. And then we begin to look at, look at Karaferro results and we realize that this is uh, not very ready to begin to be used because of this sparsity problem and because uh, usually it does 
So it doesn't give any information. A is called the Franco is nothing? No. No, okay. No, no. Um, well, you will see, I, I'm giving this here, this result here, right. because later on I will give uh, the definition of differential resultant that okay. later on, 2011 right. and 12, Xiao uh, Gao, Wei Li, and Xu Ming Wan uh, define, and you will see that this is already in this flavor. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's why we started focusing on the linear case because we realized that they are highly sparse and they are. Uh, Differential polynomials, they can be sparse in two sense. They can be sparse in the order of derivation, or they can be sparse at the algebraic polynomials in the order, in the degree of the monomials, or in the monomials appearing. So we focus on the linear case to solve first the sparsity on the number or order of derivation, and when that's ready, then we attack the nonlinear case. So at this stage, uh, well, so that's why my, my talk was, is on Macaulay style formulas because we do have a definition now, and so let's try to find ways to compute it. Uh, why do we want to have formulas? Of course, uh, from the definition I will give later about the sparse result, and you will see that they are. Uh, obtained from differential ideals through, and they can be computed using characteristic set methods. So they, there are already uh, possibilities to compute that. Um, and also in their paper, uh, Gaudi and Juan, they, they gave an algorithm which is more theoretical, but <coughs> is already exponential to compute the differential resultant, even in the sparse case. But if we had um, uh, a representation of the sparse differential resultant of the Macaulay style, like resembling the, the work that the Andrea did for the algebraic case, then we, will, we could use this to improve the existing bounds for degree and order, and also to reduce the computation to um, an interpolation problem in linear algebra. Uh, of course, the work will be done computing the support of the sparse differential resultant um, uh, to use for the interpolation. Uh, in the algebraic case, the matrices, the Sylvester time matrices, are, of, are coefficient matrices of extended systems from the original one multiplying by monomials. In the differential case, we also have to first derivate the initial uh, the polynomials in the original system and then multiply it by monomials. So there are two steps in this to obtain this extended system. The first part, uh, the derivation, is already, um, we can already decide what is the appropriate way to do that, analyzing the linear case. And we, and also, even for the linear case, the, the formulas of character uh, don't give an answer. So let me show you an example of to sparsity uh, to be considered. So here we have F1 and F2 differential polynomials. And we can consider them as differential polynomials in the variable x. I put everything else in the coefficient domain. Then the Macaulay, the differential resultant of Cara Ferro for this system would be the Macaulay algebraic resultant of this extended system. Derivate just once, each one. And this would be the Macaulay uh, resultant of this is the DCD of the determinants of minors of max maximal order of a matrix whose columns are indexed by all monomials in x, x prime, x second, of degree less than or equal to five. Well, um, and the rows are, of course, uh, obtained by multiplying these polynomials by appropriate monomials in those three um, derivatives. Uh, observe that F1 and F2 are non-sparse. I chose them non-sparse in purpose in X and X prime. 
we have all the monomials up to degree two. But the extended system is sparse. You will never find this x second to the square. And therefore, in this matrix used to compute the Karaferro resultant, all the columns indexed by x second to the i, from two to five the degree, they are all zero columns. And the, of course, the Karaferro resultant in that, in that case is zero. And the problem is because of the sparsity in the degree. So now, uh, another example where we have sparsity, but in the order, because it's linear, then they are three differential polynomials in variables x, y, z. So let's think that the z is in the coefficients, and we want to eliminate x and y, and their derivatives. So if you, we can realize easily that uh, the variable x appears up to order one unit less than the variable y in each of the polynomials. So the order is given by the order of derivation of y. And the Caraferro resultant will say derivate um, f1, uh, and the orders are 1, 2, 1. They add up to 4. So derivate this one, 4 minus 1, 3 times. The second one, 4 minus 2, 2 times. And the third one, 4 minus 1, 3 times. The coefficient matrix of that will never have a monomial in x to the fifth derivative. And then the result of the is also zero. OK. So um, in the linear case, um, well, this is all results we obtain. And basically, the, this last paper is where um, I gave the at least uh, a first solution to the appropriate number of derivations you need in each one so that the system obtained does not have, does give you a matrix that doesn't have any zero columns. So if it is zero, it will not be because of the sparsity problem. It will be because of other reasons. <laughs> and it could happen, but it's not because of being sparse. Why can you just ignore those columns? Sorry? Why can you just ignore those columns? Somehow this is what you do, but what you uh, is like choosing the appropriate um, set of variables, right. the variables and derivatives that you are going to consider, mm -hmm. and all the other ones are removed. Right. You remove columns and you remove yeah. rows right. that you don't need. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, interestingly, for this uh, we have to do some work, <laughs> and um, but. Instead of just going into the linear case, uh, I will explain how it works, but already for the nonlinear, because it's the same strategy that can be used for deciding how many derivatives you need in the nonlinear case. Um, so, the structure of the remaining part of the talk. First, I will define what I call a differential resultant formula in general of this Macaulay style, uh, or to this investor style matrices. And then um, for nonlinear differential polynomials, uh, define or how to construct some of these formulas. And for those formulas, use those formulas to compute the differential sparse differential resultant defined by Gao Li and Juan. Um, and through those, we can see what happens with the order and degree bound scheme. Um, already, uh, um, there is another paper trying to give differential resultant formulas, but for generic um, ordinary um, differential polynomials, but of order one, only order one. And the, the work I will present is in this paper in the archive, although this is not updated. I have to uh, upload a new version <laughs> with uh, many more things. OK, so we fix an ordinary differential domain, so just one derivation. And you set up differential indeterminates. Um, UJK is the kth derivative of UJ, is the notation I will use. And uh, this is notation for the ring of Laurent differential polynomials. So uh, 
it's just notation. So it's the ring of polynomials in the U, J case, and the inverses. And given a Laurent differential polynomial, uh, we will look, I will need to look at the differential support in UJ, which means the, 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 uh, the case, so that the case derivative of UJ appears, uh, or its inverse appears in some monomial of this differential polynomial. Uh, the maximum of the um, differential support in UJ will be the order of the polynomial in this variable. Uh, the minimum is what I call the lowest order. And if the support is an empty set, they are both defined as minus infinity. Um, of course, then, the order of the polynomial in any of the u variables is the maximum of the orders in the u j's. And I would consider a set of differential polynomials p, uh, all of them of order greater, greater equal than zero. They are not constants uh, or elements of the differential domain. Um, and they are, to start, they are distinct uh, polynomials. So the, the star of our um, analysis is the differential ideal generated by this set of differential polynomials in the uh, ring of Laurent differential polynomials. And as a first goal, we can think of finding um, uh, these right formulas to compute an element of the elimination ideal. Uh, observe that so far I'm not assuming them to be generic. So in principle, it's a formula that we can use in applications with a, a set of uh, differential polynomials that we obtain in some problem. Later on, I will consider them generic, of course, to study the sparse differential resultant. So an easy example just to fix the idea is look at the Lovka Volterra equations. And we can think about them as differential polynomials in the variable x, everything else in the coefficients. And these are algebraic variables. Then the coefficient matrix of f1, f2, and the derivative of f2, uh, its determinant is this polynomial, which is in the elimination idea. OK. so. In general, uh, what is a differential resultant formula? So we take the original system P, and we consider a, an extended system with derivatives of the, the given differential polynomials. And we consider a set of variables in the, uh, this is the notation for the set of the use and all the derivatives of those. I will consider also, also set of monomials for each one of the polynomials in this extended system and a total set of monomials, Laurent monomials in the variables u. So this <coughs> system will be constructed of, as follows. So take every fi and derivate up to a certain order. And u is taken so that this standard system is in the uh, ring of Laurent polynomials, not the differential, the algebraic, uh, with these variables curly u or calligraphic u. And um, we want that this system, as a system of algebraic polynomials, has uh, the number of elements minus one is the number of variables, algebraic variables. Then multiply them, each one of them, by the set of monomials in such a way that all of these polynomials um, have monomials in this omega that we fix. Then the total set of monomials, the coefficient matrix of this total set of monomials is the square matrix of size, the size of uh, omega in number of rows and columns. And the determinant of that is what I call a differential resultant formula. Um, okay. 
I wanted to give you no sorry I will I will continue and show you an ex example later. Okay, so now let's let's construct some of those. <laughs> Um, and the first part will be what I said, analyzing how far we derivate. So what are these derivations, these uh, numbers, capital Li, up to which we have to derivate? Of course, there are some possibilities, but I will give you the final answer because otherwise it will take too much time. Okay, so P sub i is notation for the set of differential polynomials minus the i one. And OP is the order matrix. So OIJ is the order of FI in the variable UJ. Then mm, this matrix um, has uh, n rows and <coughs> minus one columns. <coughs> and so this OP sub i is a square matrix. And through gamma, uh, gamma i is the set of all possible bijections from 1 up to n minus i and into 1 up to n minus 1. Uh, well, what I want is to look at all diagonal sums of this O p sub i and take the maximum, and this is the Jacobi number. So in this example, If I write in the whole part board, or I did, so right. uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I could have left this here. So for this example, OP um, for F one we have order one in U one order U two does not appear, so minus infinity for F two. Oh, sorry, we have three. So U3 does not appear either. For F2, order 2, the other 2 do not appear. And for F3, minus infinity is 0, 1. And F4 is 1, minus infinity, and 0. So that's the order matrix. And Confuse Jacobi numbers. J1, uh, remove the first column and then just look at this sub matrix. And this will be 2, right? <coughs> J2, we remove this column and then this row, and this is 1. J3, taking this one out, I think it was just minus infinity. J4 uh, is minus infinity as well. Yeah, so. hmm? Well, um, the situation where all the J Jacobi numbers are greater or equal than zero is going to be an important one for us. Um, and that is equivalent to considering this other matrix, Xp, uh, which has matrix Xij. So for this system that we have before, the matrix Xp will have Xij if there are um, if the support on this variable is not empty and zero otherwise. So. This is like this. X41, X42, and here. Oh no, this is zero. X4. And so if Ji is greater or equal than zero, this is equivalent with the corresponding submatrix having the non zero determinant. So it codifies somehow the same information. 
And this is what I call a super essential uh, system, one that verifies that all the Jacobi numbers are positive or equivalently all the uh, this mm -hmm. the terminal of um, maximal minors non-zero for XPI. And in fact, every system contains a super essential subsystem. Um, I, I can give you some easy steps to to obtain that. So, so we have we have this matrix XP, and then consider polynomials Ci and Ci minus or plus Xi one G one Xi X minus one U N minus one. And this double bar key, the set of those. Uh, I'm going to compute now a proper basis of this polynomial set uh, for uh, an elimination ordering that is considering the UIs greater than the CJs. And computing that proper basis is equivalent to taking the following matrix to the XP here, and then uh, diagonal matrix together to it. So in this part, the columns are indexed by U1 up to UN minus 1, and this one C1 up to CN. So the echelon form of this matrix gives you um, a reduced Brockner basis. I said. So let's say that this is B0 up to E and minus one. Uh, and they are, let's say that they are in this order. Then E0 um, would be the sum of some. Uh, So when you do the echelon form, the the last row, um, the last row will be zeros, and then a polynomial here that depends only on the CIs. So this is this E zero, and then let's say delta E zero is the support. So the L such that this TL is non-zero. Then this gives you the index set for the super essential for a super essential subsystem. So P star um, is the F L such that L this is the one easy. And in fact, is if the rank of this matrix XP is n minus one then this P star is unique. Uh, here is an example. Well, the one that I showed before yeah. is the one on the left. And this one you can see that is not super essential, but the rank is three, so it has a unique super essential subsystem and is given by the first two polynomials. So if you consider only the first two polynomials, they just depend on the variable uh, U1 and then x11, x12. This would be the XP matrix for this subsystem, and this one is of course very fine. The required condition. The, let's change one one polynomial. F instead of F4, we consider F5. Then the matrix is the one on the right. This one is not super essential, and the rank is less than three. So we have more than one super essential subsystem. Okay. How am I doing on time? What, what time um, is that? We have 45 more minutes, I think. Okay. Thank you. I think we more than that because you start late. Yes, okay. Sounds good. 
All right. Um, well then, we, we are going to use these Jacobi numbers to decide the number of derivations of the extended system, but modify it because um, we have a variable uj that maybe begins in order one. So <coughs> uj uh, derivative of order zero may not appear. So then we don't want to take that one into consideration for the matrix because it will also give zero columns. So this gamma, this gamma j will be the minimum between the lowest orders of the fi's in the uj's uh, for non-empty supporting this j variable. And uh, gamma is the sum of all of those. And uh, so <coughs> when the Jacobi numbers are all positive, these differences are all positive too. And um, this is the, the extended system we consider. Derivate each polynomial up to order Jacobi minus the, this gamma and put together all of them. And the number of elements is what we call capital L. And then consider this system, this set VP, which is the set of variables. Uh, so the UJ case with K between gamma J and MJ. And this MJ is uh, little MJ minus gamma. And this little mj is the maximum. Of course, you think how how far does this k go in this system? Well, the maximum between the order in uh, of the j variable in each polynomial plus how far the derivative. Um, already, also Li Gao and Chuan they use these Jacobi numbers to give order bounds for the sparse differential resultant that they construct. And in this case, they were not considering all this of the superessential subsystem, but they they do use that when they are all positive, uh, when they are all positive, these two numbers coincide. So then we have L polynomials and in L minus one variables, looking at them as algebraic variables. Uh, but the interesting thing is that um, we want to see if these variables appear all appear effectively. I mean, they, they go this far. They go this far. But maybe there are some in between that you don't see here. And if you, you don't see them, then they will give you zero columns in the matrix. Uh, so take the union of all the supports in the variable uj, and this is included, but can we guarantee that they are equal? Because this would mean that we have no zero columns to remove. Uh, if we cannot, this is what I call sparse in the order. Well, then the, the, the thing is that with this condition, this super essential condition guarantees that they are always equal. Um, the proof of the theorem is technical, it's basically assuming that it's super essential gives you many different, uh, gives you some consequences that allow you to prove this. For example, one is not difficult to see is that with super essential then in each column of this XP matrix you at least have two non-zero entries. And other uh, consequences that will be crucial to match up and fill up all the columns of the matrix. So uh, we proved this result for the linear case first, but uh, it can be used in the non-linear as well. So now we have the extended system through the derivation. It has L polynomials, that if we look at them as algebraic polynomials, have L minus one in the terminates. So then we can put it as an input of an algorithm that computes a multivariate algebraic resultant. So that was the goal in mind. And so let's do that and then look at the sparse resultant. Um, to put it inside um, an algorithm that computes uh, a 
a multivariate uh, sparse algebraic result. And I have to somehow establish order in the polynomials and in the variables just to be able to deal with them. You can maybe <laughs> control them in a different way. But uh, what I did was establish bijection between the set of variables and um, uh, the set one up to L minus one, just to say which one goes first. And then, um, taking a set of algebraic indeterminates, L minus one, then we can establish a bijection between this set of algebraic indeterminates and the set of um, extended differential indeterminates. And this, of course, extends to a ring isomorphism, uh, a ring isomorphism between these two um, polynomial rings in the y's and in the u's and the derivatives chosen. So this is just a bit of notation. Uh, if we have a monomial in the y's, uh, is a Laurent monomial, and given a polynomial in this um, Laurent polynomial ring, then AF is the support of the polynomial F. Um, so we have an, we have ordered the variables u and their derivatives, and now we order the polynomials. Uh, so through another bijection, let's say we call it lambda, and its inverse is what we call what I call rho. And then I define the algebraic generic system associated to the or it, to the system we started with. So we take, uh, for every polynomial in this extended system, we define a polynomial PL, where all the coefficients are generic, algebraic variables. Um, each one of those, they can be written in this way, in terms of the support, or we can just give names also to the um, to the coefficients, the right coefficients, and these TLs are monomials in the Y variables. Or depending on the result, one notation or the other is useful. So here is an example. We have P, two differential polynomials, the ones here, say in the variables U. Everything else is in the coefficient domain. The extended system in this case is easy, it's just derivate f2, and the set of variables is u and u prime. The algebraic generic system will be three uh, algebraic polynomials, generic in, the, in this coefficient c. So if you compare a bit, uh, we have p1 and Instead of u, we have y1 instead of u prime y2. And then instead of this coefficient, now we have here c11, which is uh, the right in term. OK, so a bit more notation. Uh, for one of these polynomials, pl, the coefficients set is cl, and all of them together is what I call c. If P is supersential, then the algebraic generic system associated has L polynomials in L minus 1 in the terminates. So now we can use um, one of the algorithms for computing the sparse algebraic resultant of this system, uh, uh, the ones given by Kani and Emiris or the Andrea. I will use um, Later in, an ex in this previous example, the software uh, by Emiris uh, based on this paper. And what they obtain is for this uh, algebraic <coughs> system, they obtain sets of monomials, lambda 1 up to lambda L, one monomial set for each polynomial here, and one set of total polynomials. <coughs> and um, the the matrix of the um, linear map defined in this way um, 
mm. is the Sylvester matrix of the generic system. And it's the determinant. They, they prove that the determinant of this matrix is non-zero. Mm. <coughs> and this is what I call, um, well, they prove that it's non-zero. And we can prove that it's also an element of the elimination ideal defined by this generic system. Um, this this idea would be in the ring of these coefficients, the variables. So, is the algebraic ideal? This is the algebraic ideal here in this ring, and so we eliminate the y's uh, using this determinant of this Sylvester matrix. When this, uh, well, this do, they do this through um, poly, how is this? Mm. Polyhedral, no, mixed subdivision, mixed polyhedral subdivision. Well, I will, <laughs> I cannot enter into that. Um, uh, but um, in this, through this process, they give a special role to say the first one of the polynomials in the system. And then you obtain a matrix and that I call S1. If you give a special role in this, uh, in their algorithm to the polynomial here, you get a different matrix, maybe SL. So for each one of the polynomials, you get different determinants. That's called the DL. And um, I wanted to say that the GCD, I couldn't find it to point it out, <laughs> that the GCD of those DL is the algebraic resultant. And in fact, well, we said before that the algebraic uh, sparse multivariate resultant is the unique polynomial that gives you conditions for the system to have a uh, common solution. Um, so is the implicit polynomial of a certain algebraic variety? And if the variety has co-dimension one, then this is what is defined as the resultant. But if the variety uh, has co-dimension greater than one, then the resultant is defined to be equal to one. So um, when in the, in the details of the definition, mm, the, the condition exists when you have a co-dimension one, otherwise it just um, give one as a convention. So I say different from one means that I mean with the non-trivial case. So in this case, um, well, oh, this curly S, or calligraphic S, was just to give a algebraic generate system. Is the algebraic generate system of P, just for short. And in this case, the resultant is the um, generates this elimination idea. In fact, in the non-trivial case, the degree of the resultant in the coefficients of the polynomial EL coincides with the degree of this determinant here. And uh, is the mixed volume, um, well, this notation is the mixed volume of the um, these are the, the convex holes of the Newton polygons of the polynomial scale, uh, removing the L1. And well, there's a formula also for computing that, and where the sum here is the Minkowski sum. And the, well, these mixed volumes uh, give you bound, give you, it's a result of Bernstein that the, this is the AKK bound, and they give the, uh, a bound for the number of common solutions of the system of the polynomial sphere. So if we continue with the previous example, using the software by Emilis, is available on his webpage, then uh, you can, one can compute the matrix S1, given a special uh, 
uh, meaning to the first polynomial, you get a 12 by 12 matrix, which is the coefficient matrix of the polynomials here. And these monomials are indexing the columns. You can give a special uh, um, place to P2, and then you get a 13 by 13 matrix, X2. And to P3, you get S3. And this one is actually the resultant. But this one, the third one, <coughs> is here. And the determinants are something like this, and you can see that the common divisor is this irreducible polynomial. Okay, so once we have this, we can specialize. And the specialization is a differential resultant formula for the original system P. Um, well, to just to, to have the specialization in order, we, it's, it's easy to think what it means, just take the, these algebraic coefficients and put them back uh, in, into them, the coefficients of the differential of the standard system. This specialization is what I call G, capital G. And because these DLs are elements here in this algebraic elimination ideal, After the specialization, then we get that the specialization of DL is inside the differential elimination idea. And so with these formulas, then the LIs are what we said, the Jacobi number is minus gamma, the U's are this BP, um, and the Omega, F, and Omega are the specializations of the monomials that you get with, say, the algorithm by any Okay, well, one observation is, of course, you specialize, and how do you know that it's not zero? What you get is, well, this is a problem to look at. Um, because we do know that the DLs are not zero. This is the work by the theory of Kanye and Emilis and Andy Andrea and so on. But uh, the specialization could be zero. And in that case, we can do the specialization more carefully, but still from there obtain a polynomial, which is not zero in the differential elimination. Um, if I have a subset of the set of algebraic coefficients, then the specialization, let's say partial specialization, with this set of uh, C would be E of C, if this is in this set, and uh, stay the same, it is not there. And then, um, Using those, we can follow the form. We can give them a polynomial in the algebraic ideal that is non zero, the algebraic elimination ideal. Um, if this subset is the empty set, then the specialization. So this would be the input, and what I want to get is a non-zero H in the differential elimination idea. To be able to do that, um, I have to consider some genericity, because otherwise then I'm lost in the specialization process. So, The original polynomial set, let's say this is a phi, this is some AI monomial, AIH, IH. 
uh, so let's say that this one is uh, a differential indeterminate. Then you can you can obtain uh, the de-elimination of the variables u. And once we are done with that, then study depending on the specific domain we are using. Um, what happens when we specialize this, those last ones? So keep in mind that it's something like that. If if the, um, the, we we can have an algorithm saying that if this subset is empty, then you just take H, the original one, is if. Um, if it is the total one, then H, um, just to be faster, let me look at it because I have it here. Um, ah, sorry. Um, in this partial specialization, let's think that we are not specializing the Ys yet, just the coefficient C. And at the end, then we specialize the y's. So, uh, if if the instead of partial we have the total one, then h would be um, the specialization in the y's. Let's define and um, denote it like this of the cubes. Um, otherwise, we take the empty set. And we add one C, which is in, which is remaining to be specialized. If um, if when you is partially specialized. With this one, if you get something that is non zero, then this is your new age and go to step two. Then specialize the whites to the use. And the interesting thing is that if the specialization is zero, that means. That is something like C minus the specialization of C to some power times an H bar. Well, I guess this is common in specialization results in the algebraic case. And also, some strategy like this was used by Li, Gao, and Juan. In one result that we have to study the order of sparse polynomials, but only in the non sparse case. And then in this case, the specialization of this H bar is your new H. And then go to step. Of course, through this, we have to prove that what we get, the H bar, is in an appreciate ideal so that the specialization is in the um, elimination, differential elimination ideal we want. And that's the key step to show it is that um, through these partial specializations we get uh, we get uh, ideals specializing these polynomials which are time differential time algebraic ideals. So then, if this is an element of that time algebraic ideal, then this is not. So h bar has to be, and you can go on. Okay, so um, if it's zero, the specialization, then we could do something like this. An alternative is to uh, do perturbations of these polynomials, uh, specialized polynomials. Um, in fact, for um, specializations of polynomials, uh, this is one strategy that was described also by and the Andrea and Emilis, and maybe it can be used for that, for these two. But it would be interesting for us to look at the um, 
sparse algebraic differential resultant, 